back from lunch. I hope you grabbed lunch. Uh, our first speaker of the afternoon uh, sessions is Delphine, who, uh, <laughs> who he turns around and looks at what she's talking about. She's talking about work, art, and fun. Say hi by clapping your hands. Okay, great. <laughs> my, my screen was black. Panic, panic. So hi, hi. I'm Delphine, and um, thank you for being here. Um, so um, just quickly about me, I'm um, I'm an independent art director and game artist, and I've been working in video games for about nine years now, and I'm part of the Klondike Collective, for if you knew, if you knew knows them, or know us, sorry. <laughs> uh, so you can, you can check my stuff on my website if you want to. And yeah, basically my job is to make art for video games. And uh, that's what I do as a freelancer. And I, I've had the chance to work on a bunch of very cool projects. And I also create my own games sometimes. So, like many of you here, uh, I'm dealing with different kind of activities. And today I would like to talk about the way we spend our time and how this can impact our mindset. So, let's start. Um, usually, we make separation between two categories. There is work, which is what you do for a living. And fun, which is what you do to relax. But for creative people, uh, we have a third category uh, to connect to this. And it's the art category, which is the time you spend to express your creativity. This art category is a necessary thing for creative people uh, who have to find ways to express, express themselves. And uh, if they can't spend some time on it, they usually get frustrated. And this is what I call the WAF. Work, art, fun. And we all have our own WAF, basically. And those are not only categories. Uh, you can see this as, as a Venn di diagram, you know, uh, which helps you to understand which part of fun and art you can have on, in your work. And uh, you can see how basically uh, these three categories can be mixed uh, or not all together. And from this, the struggle is to arrange uh, these categories in a way that makes you happy. So maybe uh, on the left, your work implies you being creative and allows you to develop your uh, artistic vision when you're doing something completely, diff uh, completely different to relax. Or maybe work and art are uh, completely disconnected, but you find fun in both of them. Another option is maybe all categories are mixed up. And you can't really make any difference between your hobbies and your work. And maybe this probably, probably looks like the best diagram to have if you want to be serene at work, right? Because you know this expression, find a job you'll enjoy doing, and you will never have to work a day in your life. And that's great, right? Because this means that work equals fun. But then, this also means that fun equals work. And that's not really what you want. So, the reason why I chose this topic today is because I know this might be a common situation for video game people. 
And I have a few friends who talk about this issue on Twitter or in real life, like uh, here GP, who is a Canadian artist. So he's saying, try to end, uh, not to end up in this situation where the main thing you do for work, art, and fun is all the same. And well, <laughs> of course, I've been there too. Um, so I think that the common situation while working in video game is work is making video games, art is making game jams or making little side projects or to satisfy this creative need. And then fun is also maybe often playing video games or going to <laughs> video games events <laughs> or uh, hanging out with uh, video games friends. So basically, it's this. And even this. That's a lot of video games. <laughs> And yeah, it can be very overwhelming, I think. Um, and this is, since it's not a matter you might figure out before feeling bad, I think it's important to talk about it and to prevent it. Because I really think it's kind of risky to stay in this situation for too long, you know? So um, yeah, first, making your brain suffocate is maybe a nut a good thing for creativity, and more importantly, you can burn yourself out doing something you love. Hey, hey, surprise. So, what might be a better worth? My take is that most of the time it's better, maybe, to keep work out firm uh, as much separated as possible. So maybe you won't feel like you're working all the time. That would mean, for example, for work, having uh, a non-creative work, like working in an IT company, I don't know. Or maybe for art, doing some sculpting as an, act an artistic activity, maybe. Or then, for fun, making pastry as your first hobby. Useful. But, yeah, that's an easy take, of course, because what if you really, really like video games? What if, you're, what if, at, what if it's what you're really, really good at? Yeah, you're not supposed to change your whole life for this worth issue, except if you want to. Um, and of course, there is no perfect answer to this. And um, there, there is so many different situations that we can give one answer. But I will tell you today what kind of worked for me recently. So if we look at my situation, uh, as I told you before, I'm a game artist, and my job is to make art for video games. So this is what I do for work. And for art, I also make my own games. So yeah, I've found in video games a creative way to express myself, and I really like working on my own projects. And well, regarding the fun part, it's maybe a little easier for me because I don't play much games. <laughs> but I guess it's not that hard to find new hobbies anyway. But what was kind of an issue for me is that what I do for art is very, very close from what I do for work. And it's even hard to show the difference sometimes, um, but the distinction is very, very important to me why I loved working on most of my contract work, they were not my games. And I really had this need to make my own things, and uh, you know, uh, this project that would be entirely mine. So, basically, I had to make a set of strict rules to tend to keep art away from work. And these rules were set for projects I would do in the art category. And 
yeah, the rules became a real part of my process while working on personal games like Sacramento and Stone of Solace. So just so you know what I'm talking about, I will uh, show you the trailer of these two games. Uh, so first, this is Sacramento, uh, which was uh, released in 2016. 2016. <laughs> Solas that was released uh, this summer. Okay, so this is the two projects I'm talking about, and I've talked about some rules, so what about these rules? So these rules were made to keep out projects away from work, and this is the first one, and I think it's the most important one. So yeah, first, de first decision I made, and um, it's that I decided not to try to make money for my personal games. So I, re I released them for free, and uh, my income from my freelance work. Why? Basically, this relieves me from the money pressure. I don't have to deal with administrative stuff, and uh, yeah, that's not work, basically. And yeah, releasing a game for free, um, you do not feel the player's reactions as much as when they expect something from you because they paid for your game. So basically, I can keep a total creative freedom. And then, well, these, game are, these games are for free, so it's also a way to reach as much people as possible. Rule number two, take the lead. When it comes for my personal games, I usually lead my team and make the overall the creative decisions on the project. It's not something I do on freelance projects or only for the visual part. But anyway, it's usually very small teams. On Sacramento, I worked with Ben Sweden, who made the music and sound design, but I did everything else. And on Stone of Solace, we were three people working on the project. Amel did the code and some design, and Jason did the music. And yeah, I feel super, super grateful uh, that I had such cool and talented collaborators on board with me. And obviously, uh, even if I was driving the project, I was also super interested uh, in having their insights. Uh, for example, we talked a lot with Armel about Stone Solace design, and I learned a lot as well. And yeah, another thing is that on both games, we worked super part-time. It was not our main work. So on Stone Solace, it was 
for more than a year. So I had to make sure that we kept making progress on the game and eventually to release it. So that's what I've done on the project. And uh, this is rule number three, which is quite important as well. No pressure. Never, never, never. So I only work on this project when I'm happy to do so, with no set hours. And I have very, very flexible milestones on them. I try to never put any pressure on me or uh, obviously on my team. So the result is that the workflow is pretty organic and non-continuous. We'll have different work sessions. And um, also the pace on this project can be slow. <laughs> but all I need to know uh, is that I, if, if I want to finish it and to keep the motivation on. Rule number four, don't force the inspiration. So yeah, for this project, I only work on, on them uh, when I have ideas. Uh, I, I, I think it's a great way to avoid the creative block. Um, yeah, you know, usually on freelance works, um, projects are more about going through specific steps, so you, you make sure that you get it right. But when I'm working on projects like, like Sacramento or Stone Solace, I free myself from my usual pipeline on methodology, and I try to be more impulsive and to listen to my instinct. So this has for result a very incremental way of work. Um, you know, I usually do uh, small working sessions, and I add content progressively. And this process had a big impact on both game structures and designs. Both Sacramento and Stanislas could be described of, as collections of something. Like uh, Stanislas is a, a collection of little scenes and small objects. So once I had my core mechanic, I could add content progressively. And it was the same with Sacramento. Even if it's a single world, uh, it was built as a collection of different spaces that I could work on separately and whenever. Last rules. Rule. Well, my personal games are usually some kind of happy places. And, um, yeah, I like to explore the same kind of mood and themes through my games. So it's usually uh, some chill and colorful atmospheres with plants. <laughs> so yeah, there are happy places for me as a maker, but also there are no failure states in my games. They are just spaces where you can chill for a few minutes. So, so I really make them with the genuine ambition that they will become happy places for other people. So yeah, setting these rules really helped me to be more serene in both categories. And um, this personal project helped me to assert my creative tastes. Taste. And also I usually learn a lot of things uh, working on them. And actually I've realized that making efforts to make this art category exist for its own, and not only as a part of my work, was even a great benefit for my freelance work. Like, I feel more at ease and confident about what I can propose creatively, and I also know better uh, how to detach, detach myself from my freelance work sometimes. But yeah, that's what worked for me. And I know that this might not be possible for everyone though. Uh, every situation is very different, especially when you make your own games for a living. Um, and also maybe 
you are totally okay with having your work and art totally mixed up. But my goal today was to make you look at your own worth and see if you feel good about it. If not, maybe you will earn make, making your own rules to feel more serene. And there are more ways to look at this wealth issue. And well, I felt guilty for this one as well. <laughs> so it's bad saying that video games people should really uh, need to learn that you can have a holiday with, without it being a game jam. <laughs> Yeah, and these are open questions, but anyway, what I really want to say is that we, uh, video game makers, should really consider taking care of ourselves and maybe save our energy to eventually find ways to grow old in this industry. Um, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Zoraida and Simon, and thanks to Arnel. <laughs>
your work. Maybe you, you have to make it to, to put it in the work category. Maybe studying is in the work category, but it's not for a living, so it's kind of difficult. But yeah, what I mean is that art is something that you do because you need and want to. Uh, so if you have to do something in some way, maybe it's the work category. So studying would be in the work category, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your talk. I had a question uh, in your model, you focus mostly on uh, how you balance work and art. Obviously, your work is on the weekdays, you have set hours. Then the art, you don't put pressure on yourself for it. Uh, but in the WAF model, there's also the fun part, which you say, for you, it's whatever. But I was wondering, do you feel for your uh, work, art, couple to work, that you have a certain balance of what you do for fun, certain times when you need, you feel the need that to complete the model, you need the fun? How does it relate for you, work, art, and fun? How do you make it work, knowing that work will occupy a certain time of your, of your week, and that uh, you will also take time for your art? How do you feel the need for the fun in there? Um, actually, I lied a little about the fun part, because uh, <laughs> a few months ago, I, gave, I, I was in, at a maze in Berlin, and I did an iPod talk with the same introductions. And there, I was talking about the fun part. And what is true is that I don't play much games, but uh, for a long time, for fun, I was also doing some drawings and watercolors, and it was very work-related. So um, uh, one big decision was one big decision was to make something completely different for fun, like really whatever. But I don't have to. Uh, I will try not to hold a, a pen or try not to be in front of uh, my com computer. Uh, so, yeah, at some point I tried press tree. That's a true story, <laughs> but it didn't last very long. Uh, I also played roller derby. I, I mean, it's something that's that what I said. It's maybe easy to find new hobbies. Um, but in my case, I tried to make it completely, completely different. So uh, it's a real way to relax. Um, is that it? <laughs> no, about the, the balance of time? Oh, the balance of time, yeah. Um, well, as I said, the, the pace on my art project can be very slow because uh, I usually work on them when, when I have time between two projects. I try to avoid working on weekends, but sometimes it happens. Uh, but yeah I, yeah, I try to to make it very easy. Uh, and it can happen whenever I have ideas, actually. Uh, it's really organic. Uh, but most of my time is work for, like, everybody. And maybe art projects on a year is 10% of my time, something like that. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, what do you know what your next project is? Personal project. Personal project? No, and I've, I have no idea. I just released Donna Solas, so maybe I, have, I need time to uh, find new new ideas and energy. Um, so no, I don't know. <laughs> If it's that solved, I think it's time to say thank you very much. <laughs>